All right, welcome back to another episode of our Guild Wars 1 playthrough in Factions. I slowed it down this time. Uh, we finished the first mission of Xingjie Island. We arrived through Seitong Harbor, went to Xingjie Monastery where Faction starts, and we did the first mission. It ends us up over here in Ron Musu Garden. Of course, from here, Factions players would normally have a primary quest that would lead them around and then go uh, to Seitong Harbor and then Zin Daijun, where the second mission is. Uh, but in this episode, what I want to do is I want to do a little tour run of this area and then come. There's like a little village here, I think. Come back to, uh, yeah, from that village, I want to go back to Saitung Harbor. And then I need to get to Zin Daijun. So I'm going to go up here through the Jaya Bluffs and then this area that I can't remember and then end up in the second and do the second mission so we'll complete our tour of shinje island as a prophecies player it's not very eventful it's going to be a little bit of a chill episode uh but anyway going for completion here so i hope you guys enjoy it <clears throat> what level are these guys they're level 10 i'll go ahead and bring them um oh get rid of this dude I don't need the guardian either. I want to just bring people who do damage, really. Um, actually. Yeah. Anyway, let's go. I'm still rocking my I IW build. My illusionary weaponry build is just so much fun. And this is just a easy playthrough anyway. So, aha, my favorite. This was my favorite green item in guild wars it's so nostalgic for me this was the first green item i ever got was from takayun chi c c and uh, i remember just being blown away when i saw that first green item drop i was like what is this that's so cool and i proceeded to just continuously farm this boss here as a low level character and i i remember i used to sell this guy's green daggers or like i think i think you can get away with selling them for like 1.5k or something the low level players when factions first came out and yeah i used to just try and farm as many as possible i would spend days just farming and getting stacks of those daggers just to sell them i don't know i don't know if i like like if i liked collecting money that way or I, I'm pretty sure I just liked the green item dropping. That was what that was enough satisfaction for me. Uh, we didn't get the drop this time, but still, good memories. I think this road follows all the way down this way. It's kind of disappointing they didn't come up with some like general um, like reward that would have been beneficial for any character. So I could come back and at least do the quests as a Prophecies player. You know, we're here. We're technically kind of traveling back in time to re relive these experiences. They... I, yeah, I don't really get why they don't allow these quests to be available as a foreigner. It's a little bit discriminatory if you ask me. But that's just, that's just me. Um, again, we just change scenery randomly. We're in the mountains now such a cool level design of guild wars faction i love it let's see if we can get if i kneel here does a oh that's interesting i had no idea so even as a low level character in factions these these uh gods mm, spirits or whatever offer you their blessings that's good to know. I wonder if you have to be level 20, though. Comment down below. Do you have to be level 20 to make use of these shrines? That's important information that everyone is dying to know. Uh, am I going the right way? I feel like this isn't the right way. Umqua Vale ends up 
Oh, yeah, this ends up going to Xinjiang Monastery. Yeah, I guess we can go this way. We can go down this way and then backtrack to this village. Again, not really any other reason to come over here otherwise, other than getting Canton Exploration uh, Track. We didn't even get Tyrion Exploration Track, though. That's kind of interesting. I feel like we went so many places in Tyria. <clears throat> oh, well. Uh... Oh, we got a boss here. I wonder if he drops a green item. This this boss would oh he's not a boss what is he he's not glowing or anything but he's got a ah oh, he has a quest that's right wolf crack what's he say shame to ask you for help but have no choice fallen brothers of crackfish claim must be even so we could do a quest for him if we weren't foreigners oh he is uh beautiful beautiful creature <laughs> he's he's uh something to look at okay we're not gonna be able to help i'm sorry buddy i don't speak your language we're from a faraway land let me head down this way fight some sin sali evil tengus Every time I see the Tengus, their character models are so cool to me. I wish they had added them as playable characters in uh, Guild Wars 2 or even Guild Wars 1, honestly. I remember playing Guild Wars 1 and just wishing that there was other races. Like, again, this game came out around the same time as World of Warcraft. And one thing that World of Warcraft was so unique about and iconic about is playing as different races and species um i remember that was one of the arguing points that people who were team world of warcraft would throw in the faces of guild wars players like you can only play as humans blah 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 I remember thinking yeah i wish we could play as other races but it's not that bad and then fast forward to guild wars 2 where they do have other races and almost 90 percent of the player player uh base plays humans because it's more relatable to look at they're more beautiful with their character models who know who knows you name the reason but i always thought that was funny Guild Wars players wanted for so long to play as other races, and then Guild Wars 2 comes along, and people just want to play as humans, or Norn. Norn is about as exotic as Guild Wars 2 players go. You played as a non-human character exclusively in Guild Wars 2? Um, kudos to you. But most of the characters, most of the player base, without a doubt, human players human character players of course yeah you know what i mean <laughs> yeah we're just exploring along here bullying these level two enemies i think just the level design in itself like with the scenery is worth exploring as a non-factions player here's the village sume village And then I'll go ahead and explore a little bit down here as, as well before going back to Seitung Harbor. The artwork as well. My The background desktop uh, wallpaper on my computer is one of the factions. I think it's uh, Kaining City. The splash art for that. I just love the art design, level design. Of this game it's so good Hanjiang Peninsula I've mentioned before also I think Xinjie Island does an excellent job of merging different Asian cultures together you can't really say it's altogether Japanese or altogether Korean or Chinese 
It's very mixed together. I love it. I've mentioned it before. I don't mind mentioning it again. This looks like a good scenery screenshot. We go up here. Let's try to get a nice screenshot of this. And now in this area, there's like a gang. It's kind of your first look at like factions. There's a gang here. I can't remember what they're called. They're called like Lin Fa or what are they called? Oh, I'm thinking of Am Fa. These are called Crimson something. We'll see. We'll fight them soon enough. Here's the screenshot I want to get. Hold on. Screenshot time. All right. I got attacked while trying to get a screenshot. These Kappa. Get him. Luckily, my tiger defended me. Good old Roy's Bane. Yeah, I want to I wanna attack these Crimson gang member. I think they're down here. Or maybe they're on this side. I'm having trouble remembering. The music is also really great here. Where's faction music? So good. I'll pick up the bone. Bone is worth a lot. Um, I think this comes out as an exit somewhere. Getting that Canton exploration. We're already up to 48%. Whoops, I used my stance. There we go, let's use our attack ability. No adrenaline for you. Just having max armor makes us pretty much unkillable here. These weak level six creatures. <laughs> The Naga as well, really cool enemies. Like they they really upgraded their their um, character models from prophecies to factions. Like just look at the Forgotten from factions and then compare them to the Naga in, or sorry, the the the, the Forgotten in prophecies and compare them to the Naga here in factions. Just their movements, the detail on them. The way the tail moves when they're attacking animations and moving animations. Very, very cool. The exit here. Yeah, there's an exit over here. Shortcut. We're exiting the cave here. Yeah, I think I'm right. I'm pretty sure there's some gang members on this outside. I think this person usually has a quest as well. You are not a student here and do not bother trying to become one. That honor is for Cantons. All right, I got you. Leave me alone. Crimson Skull. That's the bot. That's the uh, that's the uh, gang members I'm thinking about. Let's get some AOE clumsiness on these dudes. Look at that damage. They're all clumped together. A 
Okay, how do I get down there? Oh, there's no path down that line. So this is like... I don't know if this area belongs to Crimson Skull. I would like to know the lore behind this. Our, uh... Our chief Guild Wars lore correspondent in the... In the, uh, comments. Please enlighten us. Who are the Crimson Skull? And why do they have such a strong like base in the middle of Xingjie, this peaceful Xingjie Island. Like are the Crimson Skull also in Guild Wars 2? I wouldn't, I wouldn't think so because they're kind of just these gang members, pirates or something like that. They seem pretty well organized. They're not just like you know, like wild people or anything. That's the thing about Cantha compared to Prophecies. Like, they just seem a lot more developed, the people do, in in Cantha rather than uh, Prophecies. In Prophecies, they're almost like, uh, what's the, what's the... What's the time period there? It's like dark ages, not even medieval ages. This is like feudal, feudal Asia kingdom in Kantha. But like Crichton, Crichton people seem almost like, like tribesmen. They don't seem that modernized for this period which is probably why in guild wars 2 they oops, in guild wars 2 they did such a big time leap advancement with like engineers and everything i thought that was pretty cool at first i hated the engineers in Guild Wars 2, I thought, no, Guild Wars 1 time was perfect, but I kind of see why they did it. Everything's very primitive in Guild Wars 1. Even, even, uh, the Elonians, like, nothing is very large scale. There's no huge, there's no huge, like, civilizations or anything. Everything's small scale. I don't know why in this episode I keep clicking repeatedly like this is Diablo or something. I don't I think those are the first times I've gotten those messages so frequently. This guy Cho Wei, the skull axe, also drops a green item. He drops a green axe, which is the axe he drops is is actually really quite good for a low level warrior. Very good, in fact. Alright, let's put Sympathetic Visage on me. And okay, he's attacking me now. Level 14, that's no, that's no joke. And these Crimson Skulls are level 8. Ah, uh, for some reason I kind of thought he was going to drop it. That would have been nice. Little easy green item. I'm pretty sure me, uh, I, and Roy's Bane should be able to just take all these guys out. I have so much armor with illusionary weaponry on that stuff doesn't really hurt me too bad. I picked that cane up because it salvages into iron ingots. One iron ingot to be exact, and that's not worth it, actually. I should have just left it on the floor. Alright, this is the Crimson Skull. There's no reason for us to come here, other than just to see what they're all about. Exploring Cantha a little bit more. It's very cool. A dragon wrapped around the rock with fire breathing out of it. How do they? How do they? How do they do that? It's 
amazing. There's nothing that cool in all of prophecies. Like the detail on the stone. That is incredible. Like that is, that is quite a sight. That is so cool. All right, you get the idea. This is uh, the left side of of uh, Xinjie Island. I could go out that way and go down the Kenya province. Rather than do that, let's just go to Seitung Harbor and do the last, second, and final mission of. What is this guy? This land has no need of heroes. Only people's will to be exceptional. Wow, very cool looking. Who is that? Ah, uh, right, 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 right. That's the um um there's an extra quest pack in in factions. I totally forgot about it. What's it called? It's um Changing Winds. Winds of Change, that's what it is. I might have to do that after I finish the whole game. All right, we, we kind of started this last episode. We came out this way, and now we are going to do it for real. Going to Zen Daijung from Seitung Harbor. All right, let's go. So for this area, I need to go up and around like that. I'm not sure why they have it closed off. Probably for some storyline reasoning. Let me just go ahead and salvage some of this useless stuff. Two iron ingots. Okay, that's not bad. And one iron ingot. Nice. And one iron ingot. Probably better off just selling those items, but whatever. So in here, there's a lot of Yeti and and uh, these Tengu fighting each other. Oh, I remember up here there's a quest. I wonder if we're allowed to do that quest. There's actually two quests you can do up there, but you have to choose. You can only do one at a time. There's uh, a Sensale and a Yeti. That are fighting to the death. They're having like a duel on top of a mountain. Very anime style. And originally, if you help one of them uh, fight the other, the uh, uh, like whichever one dies first becomes your ally essentially. They should be fighting each other. Yeah, they they go to fight each other. I'll take out this hook beak. And yeah, he allies with me now. Tengu should have killed your strong jaw. Now your strong jaw left without honor. Thanks to stupid human interloper. What do you want, stupid human? Yeah, so he's supposed to give us a uh, quest, actually. Which we cannot do anymore because we are foreigners. Yeah, not a lot of stuff going on in these videos, but nonetheless, we get some nice views, some very nice sceneries. Like, this level design is just... It doesn't get much better than this. So cool. Put on some clumsiness, images of remorse. There we go. Go up this way, and it should lead us to the next area. The areas in faction, at least in 
Yeah, I would say generally the areas in faction are smaller than the areas in prophecies. I'm not sure why they chose to do that. Probably, I'm guessing because they put so much detail into these areas, they would they they opted for smaller areas so that people can be sure to enjoy the areas. As we saw in prophecies. The areas are just so much larger. So a lot of the spots either are very bland looking or a lot of the spots that they did put a lot of detail in in prophecies went unnoticed and unexplored. And I'm guessing that's what made them shrink down the size of these areas for factions. I don't mind it. That's another reason why factions just play so much faster than prophecies. Like, I think I did Factions video. This, I, I, pl I got through all of Faction in, like, 20... This is, like, episode 23, I think. And my Prophecies video is, like, 40-something, so... At least double the length of Factions, uh, Prophecies is. I don't know why I just said that sentence, like, Yoda. At least double. I love how creative they are with the enemies. They went for very non -tr fantasy, non traditional fantasy, like Eastern fantasy creatures. There's Yeti, there's Oni, Tengu, Aiju Lagoon. That's where we're going. Let's just go. I'm not getting anything from these enemies anyway. Like, I don't even think my pet's getting experience. That's what we're dealing with here. Probably because I brought heroes or a henchman. If I hadn't brought henchmen, I wonder if my pet would be getting experience. Okay, so we just go around and down this way. Another cool area. That throw dirt would be a nice skill for this build also. Because it's a melee AoE blind on a pretty short cooldown and, and cheap uh, casting cost. Oh, the crane would be an awesome pet to have. Inflicted soul explosion. So they explode when they die. I forgot about that. Do they have that even in like Canning City? I don't remember that. Ooh, level 16. We can get experience from them. Dragon Lily. They look like lightning drakes, but they're covered in plants. I think over there, that mountain area, there's some Naga, and I think there's a green ritualist staff over there, if I remember correctly. We go across here. Look down this way. I hope I can get into Zen Zaijun. I see no reason why we shouldn't, but...
almost there. Gotta go through this little township. I feel like the last samurai in these two videos. Last video in this video. <laughs> A foreigner's guide to Xingjie Island. Ooh. Purple armor. I can't believe I'm getting a major rune of vigor drop here. Nope. Fast casting too, though. That's not bad. And 86 gold. I'll sell that. Go, let's go, let's go. Oh, that's a Plagueborn focus. See, the Plagueborn items, I never had any Plagueborn uh, items, like good drops of these. I think I had one from a chest in Kanang City. But they look so cool. Look at that. The Plagueborn focus, that is awesome looking, actually. Reminds me of Half-Life. Do you remember that weapon in Half-Life? The... The bee shooter. Any Half-Life vets out there know what I'm talking about? Fast casting. Hmm. And that armor plus 5 while attacking is not bad. Very good for low level Mesmer. Alright, we're here in Zenjai Daijun. This mission is also extremely nostalgic for me. Because... Uh, <laughs> I used to come here with my ranger back in the day. Whenever Heroes came out in Nightfall, I used to come back here with my ranger. And I used to run this mission for people. The way I would do it is I would have myself as a barrage ranger. And then I would have a minion master. And maybe I brought one more hero as a healer or something. I think I did that. I brought two healers and myself, or two heroes and myself. And then I would run low level faction players that were looking to rush through Singjie Island to get to Kanang City for one reason or another. They would want to be rushed through this mission. I don't know why, but for some reason, faction players, after going through all of the pre faction stuff maybe they rush through it so quickly they would find themselves at zen daijun at like level 10 or 11 they'd be extremely under leveled because they would they wouldn't have done any side quests they tried to rush through it so they would get stuck here and i think i would charge like 500 gold per person or something like that or maybe i would just do it for tips and then if i had like my hero let's just imagine i had two two heroes in and myself that leaves three extra slots for players so i would make if i did like 500 gold per player that's like 1.5 per run of this mission and it's a pretty short mission so i was rolling i was rolling in the platinum <laughs> back then anyway let's do this mission i'm gonna bring a lot of damage and one more earth Lots of damage here. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go nuker. I want to go f something fun like, uh, what gives me the most energy? This gives me the most energy. I'm gonna go fast casting, and then I'm gonna go fire and echo. I just want to do it for fun. Okay. This is a horrible build. And then I need Glyph of Lesser. I'm going to do that. And you know what I'm doing. You see where this is going. 
We're going to go triple meteor shower or triple firestorm. 55 seconds. And then I'll, yeah, I'll bring this fire attunement. I always thought fire. I don't know why I thought fire attunement was an energy storage spell. Huh. Interesting. Can't bring my pet. So what else should I bring? I got some room for energy storage. So I'll bring like drain enchantment and more energy. I'll bring more energy restorage. So <laughs> This is going to be funny. All right, let's do it. Let's see if it's possible. I'm level 20, so it should be okay. Then Dai Jun as a foreigner character. Let's see if I can get off a triple meteor shower. Is there a shrine here? No shrine. You've exceeded even my own expectations. Now I must ask your assistance on a very dangerous task. Blah, blah, blah. I sent Yiju out some time ago to investigate but he has not returned and i fear the worst yeah i think i think you have a right to be fearing whoops just do a firestorm really quick <laughs> that's triple firestorm should be doing loads of damage, I think. It's gonna be so fun. Look at that meteor shower casting speed. Didn't do any damage, but still pretty cool. Now I have to wait an eternity. It's not too bad. Let's see if we get any experience or gold for this. As I saw the when I completed um, Minister Cho's estate, I didn't get any experience or gold. Like I'm pretty sure it's not a glitch, but I don't know. I thought that was weird. Well, so far, I'm just running triple firestorm, and this is fun. Oh man, this is good. I don't know if it's better than Chaos Storm, if I'm being honest. Chaos Storm is just such a strong spell. With its five energy costs. There we go. There's a Meteor Shower. 164 damage. Not too shabby. I'm having no trouble with energy management. All right, let's get off a triple meteor shower. Oh, I guess I won't be able to. Hurry up. One. Got it. There's two. Can I get the last meteor shower off? Come on. Last meteor shower. Boom. We did it. Triple meteor shower. So worth it. Oh, I got a. I, I keep forgetting Sue is a minion master. I don't know why they got rid of the minion master later on in faction. All right, let's wait for our meteor shower to re rejuvenate. There's one, two, three, four, five enemies up there, all ranged. This is gonna be epic. <laughs> I love this this strategy. There's one. Wow, the overcast lasts a century though. I might have to mix up a um No, we got it. Double firestorm, not bad. The fire attunement is great. Look at that, damn. You know what? This this is viable. I'm just going to go out and say it. This is a totally viable strategy. 
I should try this at higher level. <laughs> oh, it's fun. I should try this build on a uh, elementalist hero that I have later on, that I can get later on. The outcast is just crazy. I have no energy left. attack from behind no we're okay like this is a nuker this is a straight up nuke city oh I lost it darn I wasted my oh echo doubles that's nice hmm All right, let's go for a triple firestorm this time. One. Two. Oh, I accidentally cast meteor shower. It's okay. <laughs> Making them run through it is just crazy, that damage. And I'm pretty sure it messes with the AI. They're just going scattered. Honestly, just Triple Firestorm, I think, is better than Meteor Shower. You get the occasional knockdown for... Th yeah, that's, that's not bad. The knockdown is... If you can get it off, is pretty good. But honestly, just... Just spamming firestorms overall, I think, is a better strategy. Oops, I messed that up. I thought I had Arcane Echo on. Hello? Let's go around this back way. There's probably some Oni back here. Typically in factions, if you go, if you look, if it looks like an alternate, like easy path, it's probably got Oni back there. No, I guess not. Yeah, you guys like this meteor shower. Call yourselves elementalists. <laughs> I gotta say, this is one of the most satisfying builds I've ever tried. Why am I doing 49 damage? Do Afflicted take redu or extra damage to fire? Are they weak to fire? That's crazy. And why do they give you henchmen that are either shock or earth? That's weird. Yeah, they're definitely taking extra damage. I never knew that. Is that true for afflicted in Kantha or in mainland Kantha as well? Seems like they're dying before I even get a single tick of meteor damage off, though. Yeah, 124. Yeah, that was a necromancer. It took so much damage from a meteor. 
Raise your hand in the comments if you knew that afflicted take extra damage, extra fire damage. I had no idea. I guess I never I never spent much time as an elementalist though. out this last mob we can deal with the final boss I just see yeah, I just switched to using firestorms like firestorm is so fast and if I were running like 2020 fire magic set I'm pretty sure I could spam these even faster. 20% recharge and casting time. Dang Joe. Oh, there's Yiju. Oh, poor Yiju. He's taking reduced... Oh, he's a ranger, that's why. Ranger takes reduced elemental damage. I'm saving my cooldowns because I want to... Wow, he does tons of damage. I want to use my triple... Let's heal up. I want to use my triple meteor shower for these last enemies. This was fun, I have to say. Come on, Zunra. Clear out this miasma. Miasma? Use a meteor shower on the warriors. Use a meteor shower on the necro. And then let's use a meteor shower on the monk. Try and try and out heal that. <laughs> Oh, that's so good, man. Just dropping a cool 300 damage, no problem. That's so fun. Alright, this should be the end. Yeah, I was about to say. What's going on? Masters, that was even faster than Cho's estate. I had hoped that my eyes would not bear witness to this symbol again. Master, what is it? This is the harbinger of the deceiver, the mark of the wicked. The guild symbol of Shiro Tagachi. The man whose death turned the forest to stone and the sea to jade? The very same. This does not bode well for Kantha. We must head to the mainland and get to the root of this evil before it can... Well, let us not think about that yet. I have sent a missive to Menlo of Ascalon, one of my former students. He will no doubt be making his way to Kantha shortly. If this symbol means what I think it does, then we could all be in great danger. I must find my brother in Kainang City. He will want to know of this. You will come after and meet me. Talk to First Mate Zhang to book your passage to the mainland. He will get you to the other side safely.
All right, that was the end of the two missions, the prelude missions of uh, factions. We journeyed from prophecies all the way as foreigners, saved all of Cantha, and we did a nice little tour of a very popular vacation destination of Xingjie Island. If you liked it, leave a like and subscribe. Uh, I haven't decided if I'm going to make a poll yet about what I should do next. Uh, going to Elona and how I should do that either as this character or as a dervish uh, playing a new character. Um, yeah, I mentioned before leaving a comment about what you think would be good. Uh, I might make a poll, but I think just leave a comment might be better. So just... If you want to have some input in this playthrough before I make a decision, let me know. What am I doing next? Am I going to Elona as a me as this Mesmer, or am I making a new character to play through Istani? Come up with an idea. Let me know what you think. Whichever one seems the best or most popular, I'll probably go with that. So until then, have a good one. This was a long episode, so I'll cut it off here. See ya.